Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice radio. So today, we have got the latest expansion of the complete history of the Pokemon trading card game. We have reached EX, Ruby, and Sapphire. A very good set. A very impactful set. In many ways, that introduced a couple of really good competitive cards but didn't really have that middle ground that some other sets tend to have. Now, this, of course, was probably most noticeable for being the first set that is actually made by the Pokemon Company. Wizards of the Coast, who had been making the game up to now, they were unable to renew their license, their offer was not accepted by the Pokemon Company, and the Pokemon Company took it in-house and said, you know what? We're going to make it ourselves. And they did. And according to the lovely Jason Klazinski over on his wonderful blog, this was a move which reinvigorated the game. And a year or two into Pokemon's run with the game, it was essentially healthier, better selling, and more widely played than it had been really since the very beginning. It seems like Pokemon taking over the game was a wonderful, wonderful thing. Also, make sure you spam that like button. The views on these history videos have been going down a bit lately. But I get so much good feedback from them. So, tell your friends. Click the like button. You know, let's push this. So, EX Ruby and Sapphire. It was released on January the 31st, 2003 in Japan. And it was released in June the 18th, 2003 in English. Which is very interesting, of course. Because that was like five weeks after Sky Ridge. Sky Ridge came out on May the 12th. May the 12th, Sky Ridge. June the 18th, EX Ruby and Sapphire. The Pokemon Company could not wait to, well, essentially jump and almost bury the previous set. Now, I don't think they were actually burying the previous set. So let's be clear about this. However, they clearly wanted to start their era. These EX sets were clearly more powerful than the E-Reader sets, the final ones made by Wizards of the Coast. And it wasn't that long until the E-Reader sets were rotated out for good. It's one of the reasons why the E-Reader sets are so gosh darned expensive to try and find. Now, of course, the other thing that was really cool about this set is it did show us the introduction to the Pokemon from Ruby and Sapphire. These were the first generation free sets, the first generation free Pokemon that we ever actually got. Wizards got Gen 1 and 2 and Pokemon took over for Gen 3. And it introduced Pokemon EX. Now, these were a new type of card. And the really weird thing about these were they actually gave up two prizes when KO'd. So these were Pokemon that were designed to be incredibly powerful. But the, I suppose the trade-off here was that they all gave up two prizes when they were KO'd. There was a really big risk-reward thing going on here. Unlike the later EXs, Big E, Big X, that would come many years later, these were as they should be. They were the correct evolution stage, and they were, in every other way, the same, but they gave up two prizes because they were good. Of course, we didn't know if they were all going to be basics or not at the time, because we got half a dozen of them in EX, Ruby, and Sapphire, and by half a dozen, I actually mean eight, and they were all basic Pokemon. We saw ourselves Chansey EX, which I know has the same HP as base set Chansey, but this was big at the time. We saw Electabuzz EX. We saw Hitmonchan EX, love the art on that one. We saw Lapras EX. We saw Malamar EX. We saw Cyber EX. We saw Sneasel EX. And the best one of them in terms of playability, in terms of Pokemon that people like, and in terms of price, was Mewtwo EX. Mewtwo EX was very much the, the sought-after card in this set. The rest of them, well, they, were, they weren't amazing. Not at least in terms of making an impact. Although, the EXs that came in later sets really were. Now, I've been telling you in recent videos about the e-reader and how you could scan the e-reader cards from the previous three sets and you could listen to music and play games and all sorts of fun things on the e-reader. Now, 
The E-Reader got really scaled back when EX Ruby and Sapphire came around. In Japan, the functionality was just removed completely, according to the lovely folks over at Bulbapedia, a great website you should be using for research like I do. In English, they still worked, but they just gave you Pokedex entries, nothing more elaborate than that. They were really scaled back. It was also the first expansion since Neo Genesis to actually be released in Spanish. Yeah, that's right. Spanish was back. And we did see the debut of Japanese half decks. Now, these are weird things. We don't really get these over here. Not in the same way at all we get our theme decks but japanese half decks aren't really like that they are designed to be more competitive and they are designed to help people get into the competitive scene a bit more easily it's one of the reasons we're always quite jealous when we see these japanese half decks and they did actually have some exclusive cards which were basically mixed into our set very, very cool things. We've never really had them in the same way. I hope one day we do. Now, something that is far outside the scope of this particular video, with EX Ruby and Sapphire, Pokemon did actually bring us an official two-on-two -two format where you could play doubles in the trading card game. And that's why some of the cards you'll see coming around here actually have language like one of your opponent's active Pokemon or one of the defending Pokemon. We're not going to get into that today. It's a little bit too much to talk about there, but it's something we will do it. Honestly, I've got a lot more time on my hands at the moment, so within the next couple of weeks, we'll be doing a video about that. Now, in terms of the theme decks, I kind of love the fact that the theme decks were literally called Ruby and Sapphire. Starting off with Ruby, now each of the decks gave you three rares, but the Ruby one seems a little bit less exciting. You got two Blaziken and one Rainbow Energy. It was a Fighting Fire theme deck, I should add. Now, the other thing is, of course, there was a really good Blaziken in this set. Probably the best card in the set. But that's not the one you got in the theme deck. Boo, hiss, etc. My apologies. It does also include a random Holofoil card from the main expansion. So that's quite nice. Moving over into Sapphire, we've got a Water Grass theme deck, and you get yourself a rare Swampert, a rare Pelipper, and a rare Weezing. Clearly, these were based around the stage twos of the first part of the Pokemon from the set, which were very, very cool. And I should actually show you the coins here. We've got a lovely little Mudkip coin and a lovely little Torchic coin that make me very, very happy indeed. Also worth noting, there was a really good Swampert in this set. It's not the one you got in the theme decks. Sorry. I don't know why I'm apologizing, right? I, this might shock you. I did not make the theme deck, so hey-ho. Now, in terms of the most expensive card in the set, really digging around, the only one I really found was Mewtwo EX. $35. You can pick up a near mint version for like $35. And I went and had a look on eBay just to make sure I wasn't being silly. No, they're readily available. And this is the most expensive card in the set. Because Mewtwo is a very popular Pokemon, because it's an EX, because it was a playable card, there's a lot going for it. But the thing is, this was back when the game got reinvigorated. Bigger print runs, bigger sales, etc. So unlike the undersold, underprinted sets we saw previously, the value just really isn't there in these sets. Now, that's not to say a sealed booster box won't set you back like two and a half grand. It will. But in terms of buying individual cards, if you want to buy singles from the set, you're probably not going to be struggling too much. Now, in terms of the best cards, honestly, the set seems kind of top-heavy. There were a couple here that were very, very good. Probably the best of which was Delcati. Delcati was amazing. Delcati, now again, there were actually two Delcatis in the set. One was significantly better than the other. And the one that is significantly better had the Poker Power Energy Draw. Once during your turn, you may discard one energy card from your hand and then draw three cards. But remember I told you that in Sky Ridge we got Oracle. 
and Oracle let you search your deck for any two cards and put them on top of your deck. Now, we did have Porygon 2 previously, which let you draw until you had three cards in your hand, which was nice and lovely and all of that, and I love Porygon 2. I've made my love for Porygon very clear on my channel. But the fact of the matter is, yeah... Porygon 2 just could not compete. And Delcati and Oracle was a really, really good combo. That's not to say that it was the only use for Delcati. Delcati was a very, very good card that saw a lot of play in a lot of different ways. But it is to say that it was a very, very good use for it. Now, in terms of real attackers here and fighty Pokemon, the best one we had was Blaziken. Blaziken was very, very good. It had the Poker Power Fire Starter. Once during your turn, before you attack, you may attach a Fire Energy card from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. And then for free energy, it did 50 damage. You discarded an energy, and then you did 10 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Now, if we're being honest here, Blaziken was, it was good. Let's be clear, right? Blaziken was really good, but Blaziken really took off when we had Blaziken EX released a couple of sets later. When we got ourselves over to Team Magma versus Team Aqua, and we had Blaziken EX, we had better, more powerful attacks, and we still played this Blaziken. This was still a very good Blaziken, but I think it's fair to say that it was when Blaziken EX came out that we really saw the deck come into its own. Now, we also saw a little bit of love here for Breloom. Now, like a lot of the cards we saw in the expansion, it didn't really come into its own necessarily with EX Ruby and Sapphire. The EX sets kind of came thick and fast, and what we saw was decks really evolving over time. So we didn't necessarily see one set contributing entire decks, not all the time at least, certainly not this early, like we did in some of the gym expansions, but Breloom was very, very good. Well, it kind of been played in a four corners deck of a bunch of other things, I think is fair to say. And Breloom, two energy, 20 damage. Grass, double colorless, 40 damage, plus 10 more for each fighting energy attached to Breloom. It was just a really nice option as an efficient, hard-hitting grass attacker. Didn't set the format on fire, but it absolutely was a good option for a grass attacker in some of these multi-type decks. Now, we did see that Gardevoir here was a rather good card. It had the Poker Power Psy Shadow. Once during your turn before you attack, you may search your deck for a Psychic Energy and attach it to one of your Pokemon, and then put two damage counters on one of those Pokemon. And then for one Psychic Energy minimum, you did 10 damage for each energy attached to Gardevoir, and each energy attached to the defending Pokemon. So this was one of those where you accelerated energy and you smashed. And again, we needed other Gardevoir. More on them in a moment. But make no mistake about it, this was a very good card. As was Swampert. It's kind of a, a little bit upsetting, I suppose, that Swampert and Blaziken were amongst the very best cards in the set. And Swampert and Blaziken were featured in the theme decks but not the right ones. Swampert had the Poker Power Water Cool. Once during your turn, you may attach a Water Energy from your hand to your active Pokemon. Are you starting to see a little bit of a theme here? Blaziken, Gardevoir, Swampert. These were not necessarily the best attackers. Swampert did 4 Energy, 50 damage plus Sleep. But they were all really good for energy acceleration. So what essentially happened was, as the format moved along, these cards stayed around to accelerate energy to the better attackers that we would get in a few sets' time. In terms of trainer cards, honestly, I'm digging around here, and I am not seeing much love for really any of the trainer cards in the set. Energy Removal 2. Flip a coin if heads remove an energy from your opponent and Pokemon Reversal. Flip a coin if heads gusting. They weren't released in this set primarily. They had already been released. However, the fact that they were reprinted in this set kept them in the format a little bit longer. And we did see them popping up even in World Championship winning decks. And the good news is that now we've had proper World Championships with proper World Championship decks. We can really start looking at which of these cards actually made a splash at Worlds. 
which we will in a moment. A few other cards I want to shout out as being very, very nice, although not necessarily setting the format on fire. Septar had the really nice Poker Power Energy Trans to let you move your grass energy around the field as much as you like. Free energy, flip two coins, 50 for each heads. I really like the Waylord from this set. Now, partly it's because I really like Waylord, and partly because 120 HP on a stage one single prize Pokemon was nuts. Really, really high. As is the case with Waylord, the attacks were not phenomenal. Free energy, 50 plus 20 to itself, or 5 energy, 70. But certainly 120 here was pretty gosh darned awesome. And Mewtwo EX gets a little bit of a nod as the best of the EXs. One Psychic Energy lets you attach two energy cards from your discard pile to Mewtwo. And it is energy cards, not basic energy. And then free energy, 60 damage. This was a nice EX that did see a bunch of play. Remember back then, 60 damage was really not that bad at all. Although with Mewtwo coming in as one of the best EXs with 100 HP, Waylord's 120 really does start to look a lot better. And in terms of the top decks, what we really saw here was three decks that were not necessarily the best at the time. They were good, but that really came into their own and actually ended up making splashes at the World Championships. As in all of these were world's winning decks or... Not necessarily world winning, but certainly doing very, very well. So, for instance, Chris Fullock took second place at the World Championships in 2004 with a Blaziken deck. Now, it did play Blaziken EX as well. Blaziken EX was the real attacker here. Two energy, 30 damage, flip a coin if heads 50, if tails 30 plus burn. And then four energy, discard two fire energy from Blaziken and do 100 to one of your opponent's Pokemon. But bearing in mind, you've got the other Blaziken to accelerate the energy right back again. So you were doing all right. Then, of course, what you would do here is you would use Delcati, which firstly added consistency. But also remember, you needed energy in the discard to accelerate with Blaziken. So clearly, this was a very, very good option here. And this was one of the very, very best decks. It didn't win the World Championship because we were all completely blindsided by Japan's Magma decks. More on them later. But it was one of the very, very best decks at the time. Also in 2004, Reed Weichler went and got, well, second, was the finalist in the juniors division with a Swampert deck. And once again, what we really see here is Swampert bringing the energy acceleration. And then we saw Swampert EX, which would be released later on. And Suicune EX really coming in as the main attackers. Swampert EX, which also came in in Team Magma versus Team Aqua. As a side note, when we get to that set, we are going to see an awful lot of, well, game-breaking cards, frankly. One energy, 20 damage, plus 20 more for each basic energy attached to Swampert. Not used to pay for the attack. Can't add more than 80. And then free energy, 40 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. And then flip a coin. If heads, your opponent discards an energy attached to that Pokemon. Which was very cool. And then Suicune EX for one energy did 10 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. And you may move an energy from that Pokemon to another. And free energy, 50 damage. But you may return all the basic energy you've got on Suicune to your hand. But then do 10 more for each energy that you returned. So another very, very good deck that did very well at the World Championships in 2004. And if you want one more, how about Kevin and Guyans? Sorry for the pronunciation. Gardevoir deck. And once again, it wasn't just Gardevoir. We needed Gardevoir EX that would come around in Sandstorm. But we still had Gardevoir for energy acceleration. And that was very, very nice indeed. The Gardevoir... For one psychic, one colorless energy, you counted the number of cards in your opponent's hand and put that many damage counters on the defending Pokemon. 
or for four energy, it did 10 damage for each energy attached to all Pokemon in play. Bearing in mind, you've got the other Gardevoir for energy acceleration. And even though there weren't necessarily a huge amount of phenomenal decks coming out here, we had three Pokemon in the set which ended up being the backbone of world championship winning decks. I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but I think that makes this a pretty nice set overall. And there we go. That was EX Ruby and Sapphire. Huge because it brought the game into Pokemon rather than Wizards. Huge for introducing Gen 3 Pokemon. Huge for introducing Pokemon EX. And huge for introducing multiple Pokemon that would go on to make a splash at the World Championships. For now, ladies and gentlemen, I would just like to know what you think about this. I want to know your memories of the set. I want to know your favourite cards. I want you to shout out in the comment section any cards that I didn't shout out that you think I should have. And of course, I want you to spam that like button and share it around with your friends so we can keep this series going. Go nuts in the comment section, but please remember the rule. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, or you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Plays, where you can find out about a whole bunch of games that don't have Pokemon in, but are pretty gosh darned good nonetheless. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.